Welcome to Martini Time. It's been a beautiful Saturday here in Blackstone, the center of the world. But then you too are the center of the world. And uh, it looks like we may get some rain, hopefully, Monday or Tuesday. We're really dry here. So anyway, I wish I could... <laughs> Wish I could pour a little martini. When my uncle died, my martini priest, and uh, we took his ashes down to Tampa, and uh, they dug a little hole to put his uh, urn in it, and I put a martini glass in there. And then uh, when they covered it up, I poured, we all had a martini around the grave, and, uh, and I poured a martini on the grave, and I thought that was nice. So... Anyway, here's to my Uncle Tommy. My, uh, my martini priest. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. I really didn't. Uh, today's been funny for me. It's been a low energy day. I didn't even have uh, energy to do my morning talk. You know, it was kind of like, oh, what's the use, you know. Uh, take a vacation, you know. Just wasn't there, which is okay. And then uh, today has been, uh, you know, uh, watching some uh, TV and, and reading, and uh, my wife is gone. And it's been a low energy day. And I've, you know, that's unusual for me because I'm usually kind of like up, you know, uh, pumped up and ready to go. And I wasn't even sure I had, well, what am I going to talk about? You know, who cares? But then, I, you know, here I am. And, uh, I watched, we watched a movie last night at, the, at our Friday night movie, and it was a 20-year-old movie called Practical Magic with Nicole Kidman and, um, uh, and I forget her other name. But hey, <laughs> when I try to think of something, pew, it's gone. So uh, anyway, Practical Magic was a really you know, great little movie because it was about a family of uh, witches in New England uh, the Owens family, and they had to uh, go back to some original witch who was, uh, uh, they couldn't hang her because the rope broke, and so they sent her to live on an island or something. And uh, so anyway, her, the lineage went on down to two aunts, and then they had uh, two sisters. Um, and, uh, but they were always doing practical magic. They were, you know, potions and curses and everything. But, the, but as I look back at this movie, you know, and what relevance does it have for me, the movie was basically about these women who didn't care what people thought. Uh, the town called them witches and threw rocks at them and all that, you know. And so, but they survived and they had a little um, magic shop there in town. And when <clears throat> when they needed to, they would, they would, uh, you know, the exercise devils and anyway. I don't want to get into the story of that, but they were practic they were practicing witchcraft. And, uh, of course, they all wanted the, the romance thing. They wanted to find true love and all that. But I guess the meaning to me was these uh, uh, women who uh, created their own little coven, their little family coven, which enabled them to transfer the powers of witchcraft uh, through their children because the children grew up and were imprinted with it. And uh, we grow up in a culture, and we're imprinted with the culture, which, of course, doesn't believe in witchcraft or spells or anything. But the, the, uh, as, I, as I talk about this, the witches were creators and created. In other words, they, the, the, the witch was condemned because whether they did or they were believed to, they were believed to be able to change reality through uh, potions or magic or whatever you see. In other words, they could influence the material world. And that, in our Western culture, was a heresy. You see, only Jesus could do that, and he's dead. He's safely put into the church. You know, so you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't operate on reality. That, 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 that power is lost to us. All we can do is build machines that operate on reality. So we have sublimated our creative force to our technology, and now the technology operates on reality. But we're powerless. We're empty. 
we're hollow. And we're hollow because we don't believe we have the power to operate on reality. So we don't believe that we even create the reality we live in. We believe we're the created. Reality is creating us. And it doesn't matter if you're a scientist or religious, because either way we're created. God creates us in the religious context, or blind chance, or evolution, or random mutations, or genes create us. But either way, we're, we're victims of some external force that creates us, you see. So this movie was really a, a metaphor about uh, the, the possibility that we can create the world we live in, because that's what the witches did. You know, they, they could, uh, they, they would, uh, you know, ex get a, exercise a spirit or something, you know, and all of this, um, you know, it's called occult powers, you know, uh, you know, psychic powers and all that. In the scientific community, which is the common sense community, uh, it's all fake. There's some other, there's some hidden cause, there's something going on, there's some string somewhere, you see. You know, that's not possible, it doesn't fit our map, you see. So anyway, I seem to be, I wanted to bring that movie up because I was just kind of like reviewing it right now and understanding, you know, what, what, uh, what, what was a little bit behind the, the meaning of, the metaphorical meaning of it. And what is this fear, you see, of what people will think? And also this fits into why I, I think I had a little energy loss today. Uh, kind of a, uh, a sink, you know, kind of a sink, you know, kind of like, ah, uh, what's the use, you know, what's the, <laughs> What's the what's the goal? What's the purpose? You know, what's the purpose of my being here? You know, uh, so I also you know so that's a, that's a, a question, and then what what the answer comes up is well, there's no purpose. <laughs> so <laughs> you see, <laughs> there is no purpose because if there was a purpose, I wouldn't get it. You know, I'm not making any money. I'm not making any. Uh, uh, I'm not getting a big audience, I'm not getting any fame, I'm not getting anything out of it. A few people like, you know, check in and once in a while, somebody said last night at the dinner, you know, uh, their, a friend of theirs said they really liked watching my talks, you know, uh, they, you know, and so there's a few people that like to watch my talks, and, uh, but at the same time, uh, why did I come here tonight? Well. I think it's Practical Magic. That's the name of the movie. And I put the title of it on here, Practical Magic. What is Practical Magic? Well, and, and I'm fumbling with this as I talk to you, trying to uh, articulate it uh, to myself and to you. So Practical Magic, is this talk Practical Magic? Well, yes, it's practical because and it's magic because it's getting me out of my funk. <laughs> it's, it's getting me out of my, uh, oh, what's the use? It's getting me out of my, uh, I don't feel like it. It's getting me out of, uh, uh, you know, why am I doing this? You know, the question, what will people think? What are, you know, what's the use? What do people think, you see? So it's kind of like, uh, the talk to me is kind of like, uh, it's magic, in the sense that uh, it's not uh, predicted, it's not um, uh, premeditated, it's not determined, it's, it's not written out. So I don't know where it's going to go. And that's kind of like with magic. Oh, it's magic. It means a surprise. Magic is a surprise, you see. A surprise. Magic. The rabbit comes out of the hat. Whoa! <laughs> you see. So magic, so practical magic then, is magic that is not just for a surprise, but has a practical purpose to it. So practical magic is basically doing something that you do that is magical for you. Uh, whether it's a, uh, a hobby, or writing, or playing on the piano, or going for a walk, or whatever you do that seems to uh, open you up to a surprise. 
That's the magic. What do you do that opens you up to the unknown? What is you, what do you do? What can you do that opens you what do you that's if you have any passion, that's where that's gonna go. What can you do that opens you up to the unknown potential of this moment? So we're looking at this moment, this eternal moment, this eternal now, as being always potential. So it can be anything. Potential means it's like in, in uh, Big Bang, anything can happen Thursday. <laughs> anything can happen moment. So the only way to get that, and that's magic. So the only way to get to anything can happen moment or anything can happen magic or practical magic is to do it. Do it, you see. If you don't do it, you don't open it. If you don't open the gift, there's no magic. There's no surprise. So the moment is like a gift that we have to open without any expectation or knowledge of what's in it. So in that way, you know, I come to these talks um, and I, I talk to you about these talks because they are uh, really our talks. I mean, they're really about you and about how to, and I'm kind of like uh, doing, I'm kind of like I, I am doing practical magic that works for me and modeling it to you. So you don't have to come up and do Facebook talks. That's not the way. What you have to do is find your practical magic in your life. And then you just do it. Uh, regardless of how you feel. Regardless of what people think. Regardless of the emotional resistance. Re regardless of the inertia of the past and oh, what's the use you see regardless of all that you just do it you see so if you can find your practical magic that would be some thing you do that gives you a sense of uh, surprise and curiosity and uh, uh, something that informs you and something that is not planned in other words, it's play. Oh, so practical magic is play. Now play is, of course, natural to children, but it's not natural to adults, uh, the serious adult. So if you are, you know, in the adult world is serious. And so in our culture, we kind of like indoctrinate the child, the playful child, into the serious adult world and we cut them off from the play. So you can't do that in the real world. You know, Santa Claus is dead. Kind of like a circumcision of play. So anyway, this uh, we have to we have to rediscover play. Well, in a lot of there's a lot of play going on. Uh, in the internet, on the Facebook, you know, everywhere in our culture, there's a tremendous amount of play going on. YouTubes are play. All of this is play, you know. This, uh, and then we have the serious. So there's two worlds. There's a serious world, and the serious world is very befuddled and and frustrated uh, because it's double. It's a double bind in the serious world. Nothing you can't get out of it. And then there's the people that just play, <laughs> you know, the playful people. And you know, they don't not concerned with the politics in this serious world. You know, they just go out, they just play in their little games or whatever they do. Maybe video games. I don't know. But anyway, that uh, you know. So there's a there's like there's like two uh, two worlds going on: the serious world, and it's all analysis and and uh, discussion and serious discussion and and uh, nothing we trying to categorize everything and understand it and all that and fit it into some system or map you know and nothing fits now nothing fits you see and uh, we can't make anything understanding the mass shooters you know you know how does that fit and all of this serious world you know, is going to hell you see we're on the wrong course what was some thing just up now with uh, 70 percent say the America's on the wrong course you know, well, what's the right course? 
play. <laughs> Practical magic. Play, you see. If you can't play with something, you don't discover anything. So, see, so what I do here is, this for me, this is play. You know, in other words, I come here and play, and I invite you to play with me. Uh, hopefully, uh, the, the talk will move in a direction that is, that is uh, uh, sane, <laughs> and that, you, you know, that, that helps, it's practical magic for you, you see. So I'm kind of like trying to articulate in real time this practical magic of surrendering to something that is where I play. And so you kind of like have to surrender to play. It's like when you're sitting on the sofa and the kids are playing and they say, come on in. And you say, oh, you got your arms crossed, you know. And there's some other adults around there. And they're all adults, you know. And the kids are getting off into some little fantasy, you know. And you say, the hell with it. And you just jump down in there and jump into the play with them. And the kids love it, you see. And the other people sit there with them. And and they, have, they, they enjoy watching you play, you know. But, <laughs> you know, but then there's a feeling of, you know, you've lost it, you see. We all have that kind of experience. Wedding receptions. I used to, I used to uh, photograph rep wedding receptions. And you go to the uh, uh, reception and the band's playing. And the women usually will kick their shoes off and jump in. Uh, dancing is play. All right? Music is play. So they jump in, and the men are kind of like, and, and the women, come on, come on, and they're all, oh, I haven't had enough to drink yet. So, come on, come on, and then they go grab some husband or boyfriend and pull him in, you know, and then he's kind of like loosening up, and then he gets a little more liquor, and then finally he's just going, oh, you see. Play, play is spontaneous. You see, play, play is practical magic. Uh, it's magic because you don't know what it's going to do. You can't predict or control play. So that makes it, there's a surprise in it. And there's a surrender in it. And the practicality of it, it just makes you alive. <laughs> it brings you back to life, you see. It takes you out of your, uh, oh, I just don't feel like being alive today. I just don't feel like jumping in today. I just want to crawl in a hole, and I just want to read a book and, and maybe just watch Netflix and just kind of zone out, oh, you see. But the play calls you, you see. Come on, come on, come on. So I get up, and I jump in. And of course, uh, I have a martini. <laughs> but then the martini... Uh, thanks to my uncle, it's kind of a metaphor. You know, it's, it's kind of like a metaphor for the joy of life and communion and play, you see. So thanks for dropping in, and I hope you get a little idea of what practical magic is. So thank you, and I'll see you in the morning.